What up, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. And it's a special day because we have the return of Mr. Ryan Pepio. Pepio, of course, just won the Pacific Coast League Pitcher of the Week. Had an outstanding start. We're going to break that all down. But, Ryan, thanks for joining us again, my man. Oh, DMAC, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and it's exciting times for you, man. It's great to see you back there on the mound, of course. Dealt that oblique injury out over three months there, but you're back on the mound, and you were outstanding. I rewatched it yesterday. You retired the first 18 batters you faced. You gave that single to open up the seven. We had six perfecto. I mean, it was great. You had struck at 11 batters in six and two-thirds innings, one run, no walks. Just what were you feeling out there, man? Were you in the zone? How locked in were you? I was pretty locked in. Finally, felt like myself from spring training. Uh, the first few... Rehab starts, um, getting back out there, um, definitely a little bit of rust going out there, having thrown in games in a few months and then going against guys who've been locked in for three months definitely was a little bit uh, to get used to. Um, but finally felt like myself again, getting on attack mode and just going after guys, having a lot of fun. Yeah, and you were phenomenal out there. Like I said, 11 strikeouts, tied a career high, 21 swinging strikes, just one. What was working so well for you as far as pitches specifically? Two, what did you have for breakfast that morning? Uh, let's see. Breakfast that morning. Where did I go? Uh, we were in Tacoma. I went. What did I have? Oh, it was a day game. So uh, day game, yeah. I, had, I had breakfast at the field. So I had, we had breakfast burritos. I just I couldn't do that all that. So I just took the stuff out of the burrito. I just have to eat like simple stuff before I pitch. Can't like a few hours before, and then and then so just like some eggs, some potatoes, bacon, uh, just whatever can get me through. Um, but. Just attacking with the fastball, getting ahead of guys. Um, and then, honestly, the fastball was working. Pitching at sea level was kind of nice. And then pitching in Oklahoma where it was hot or Reno where you're pitching 5,000 feet in the air. So finally getting to play where the ball moves a little bit was nice. And then also, also it was like my fifth time out there pitching. And so um, just kind of had enough under my belt where I kind of felt like I was myself again. Yeah, and that's how it felt like to me. It looked like the Ryan Pepio that we saw during spring training, where you earned that role in the opening day rotation. You were phenomenal, led the team in strikeouts. Do you feel like you're back to being where you were before the oblique injury, Ryan? Yeah, I feel like mechanically, um, pitch-wise, I'm about as close to that as, as I've been. Um, continuing to work, continuing to just kind of get reps under my belt and just kind of get the innings built up. I'm just happy to be back out there pitching again. It was tough to watch all the games from home and watch it on TV. So just happy to be back out there throwing the ball. Yeah, I know. And I know that must have been so frustrating considering all the work you put in the off season, refining that delivery, getting that slider to play up even more, getting that fastball command, you were pounding the zone and you see your guys out there on the mountain having success. It almost reminded me of that episode of the Simpsons where Bart breaks his arm and he can't swim all summer, right? almost felt like that was Ryan Pepio out there, but it's yep. good that you're back now. But what was your mindset going into that rehab? How did you attack it knowing that, okay, oblique injuries, they can be tricky, they can linger. But how did you attack that? What was your mindset, Ryan? It was just kind of take it day by day. Um, I know it could linger and it definitely did. Um, it was a tough one because it was up underneath my ribs. Um, kind of like in the intercostal as well, where like the oblique and intercostal connect. So it, it was it was a tough one because you can't really do any like soft tissue work to get up underneath your ribs to try to get to alleviate. And then also trying to have the fine balance of taking time off from throwing, but then also like not taking too much time off of throwing so that the buildup phase takes forever and then could possibly hurt your shoulder or elbow from not throwing enough. Um, so it was just day by day, try to, get 1% better each day. Yeah, almost both bad. Not only could you not pitch, you couldn't golf. You couldn't hit another hole and run, right, Ryan? I mean, come on now, hole and one there at Justin Turner's golf tournament. But yeah, I want to ask you too about kind of your pitch mix, where it is right now. We know your changeup. It's one of the best that we've seen in years. I said on last show, it's nastier than a gas station bathroom. But we know that pitch is it, right? But as far as taking your game to the next level, what is that key pitch? Is it the slider? Is it filling up the zone with that fastball command? As far as where you're at with your mix right now, where does that stand, Ryan? I definitely feel very comfortable with all three pitches right now. Um, refined everything. I got the changeup back in the zone and then more behind the plate rather than last year where it was kind of leaking arm side all the time. And then being able to pound the fastball glove side and then up in the zone late um, and then throwing the slider off of it uh, either early in the count first strike or trying to get some weak contact with a ground ball or maybe a quick out. 
Yeah, no, it seems like you're in a good place and you look at your progress that you made down at OKC, but I know that you're itching to get back to the show, to pitch at the big league level. We know this Dodgers organization, they like to preach, just perform where your feet are at, but how much are you just itching to get back and maybe Kershaw needs a spot start, a roll opens up, or are you just kind of just saying, okay, I'm going to make the most of this here, and when my name is called, then I'll be ready? Definitely that. Just kind of stay where my feet are. Uh, I'm here. Um with a great group in OKC, a bunch of great guys, um, great staff. So I'm happy to be here, um, just happy to be back throwing. And it's just all about getting the innings under my belt and kind of just logging innings, logging pitches, getting into different situations, uh, working out of things. So just continue. Whenever my name's called, my name's called, and I'll be ready to go. Um, obviously, would love to, um, but I'm here now, and I'm just going to continue to throw and continue to continue to develop. Yeah, and if you look at your start so far, 10 and two-thirds innings, two runs on six hits, two walks, 14 punch-outs. What are you most encouraged by with how you've looked since you've returned? Just I think overall the command um, has improved a lot, just kind of how it was in spring training. Um, the Angels kind of game was kind of a little bit different. I was kind of trying to pitch through the oblique thing during that one. Um, but throughout the whole spring training, it was definitely had improved the command, limited the walks, um, and a lot of the hits I had given up were a lot of – singles so i mean singles don't kill you and solo homers don't kill you is what um what they preach so it's keep as little guys on base as possible and limit the damage when there are guys out there yeah and you're gonna get an opportunity i want to say i don't know if you remember the interview we did in the off season i said you're going to be my rookie of the year pick this year so if you do get called back up i need you to throw like four or five perfect games in a row make a late run at this ryan do me a favor hey we still have next season so i'm not too worried but i want to ask you about one of the dodgers rookies this season you saw bobby miller last night he continues to impress he continues to grow as a pitcher what has impressed you most about bobby miller so far bobby's a bobby's a stud um there's not much more you can say about him. He's just a stud, and uh, it's, he's fun to watch. He's a competitor. He's going to go out there and take the ball whenever he's given the opportunity. He's going to give it everything he's got. And um, I think Kike said it last night in maybe his interview, but you can't really tell that Bobby's only 23 when he's out there, and he plays like a lot more mature. And it's just really fun to watch and just be able to like see how he goes about his um, his business and how he goes out there and pitches and I mean, he's got electric stuff. I mean, he's throwing 100 and 101 mile an hour fastball, 90 mile an hour change up, three different sliders. It seems like curveball. He's got the whole mix. So it's just, it's just cool. And to be able to be friends with that guy, teammate with that guy and um, just see him have success um, at the big league level. It's, it's pretty special. Yeah, and I was going to ask you, how much pride do you have in watching guys like Emmett Sheehan and Michael Grove, I mean, even Tony Gonza? I mean, we know Kershaw and Urias, they're established aces. We understand that. But it feels like this is your group. Your guys going up there having success. Just how much pride do you take in that? How much have you been following? How closely have you been watching those guys and what they've been able to do this year? I mean, I watched, I watched every game at home. Um, so every time the game came on, day game, night game, I was sitting on the couch. Uh, watching every game and you know just taking it all in and just seeing how guys go about and attack guys different ways and it is cool because you kind of come up through the system with those younger guys and you get to see them have success and we all have the same goal and same dreams and aspirations of playing and having success in the big leagues to see those guys being able to do that it's pretty cool yeah, no, it absolutely is. And I think you look at Bobby Miller, the success that he's achieved, and you look at the fact that he's a guy that at the minor league level, they had him tinkering with some stuff. People looked at his numbers and were saying, okay, Bobby Miller, maybe he isn't that great. But still, everyone that really knew, like you said, he has electric stuff. This guy is big time. And then when he got his opportunity in the show, the light turned all the way on, and he's had his ups and downs. But for the most part, he's been phenomenal for a rookie. And for you, in your case, look, I planted my flag a long time ago. I said, Ryan Pippio is going to be that guy. Pep is someone that's going to be an impact starter for this team. Do you feel like as you need to really see that competition in the show versus AAA? I mean, you really have nothing to prove down there, but where do you stand on that as far as needing to face big league competition? Um, yes and no. I mean, obviously would love to be up there and pitch in the big leagues and face those competition. But for me right now, I, I mean, I missed three months, so it's just about getting innings and getting pitches and um, continuing to go deep into ball games and getting the ups and, um, getting in different situations and battling through things. So I think for me, that's the most important thing right now, whether it's in AAA or it's in the big leagues, it's just going out there and making pitches and, you know, giving our team the chance to win wherever I'm playing. 
Yeah, and as far as your development goes, Ryan, it's well known that the Dodgers organization, they're dedicated to player development from low way to the big league level, the biggest analytics department, sabermetrics, biomechanics, video analysis. But if you could just take us behind the scenes a little bit and describe the Dodgers player development process and how it specifically helped you as a player. It's top notch. I mean, I don't know. I don't know any other organization. I've uh, never been with anybody else, so I, I couldn't speak from any experience anywhere else. But talking to guys who've come from other places, they're like, it's it's another level here. Um, you have every asset you could possibly want, whether it's metrics, saber metrics, biomechanics, whatever interests you or peaks for you or makes sense. It's it's there and available. And if you ask for it, it's given. Um, for me. I mean, I have all the scouting reports going into every every start with the hot zones, cold zones, places to avoid, pitch to avoid. Um, but then at the same time, go into throwing your bullpens, and it's like, okay, I have the rap set of the track mans, everything with all the pitch metrics. If I want it, I can have it. If I don't want it, I just kind of want to have like a touch and feel kind of day and just kind of see how things are moving and going about it. I can just do that. Um, it's all just personal preference too. So whatever whatever floats your boat honestly and everyone's different so somebody some guy may want every single thing every toy and every bell and whistle or somebody may want nothing and just be able to go out and see how things are moving and what they look like and maybe just have a hitter stand in there and be able to get that kind of feedback yeah that's a sense i get because you love the fact that they have the ability to go as deep as you want but if you don't want to go that deep they're going to say okay we're just going to try to optimize you any way we can we're going to take what you do good and make it great take it great to elite so that's i think why this organization has had so much success and you're another great example of that and you look at this team as far as the role that you could have this year and you got the postseason coming up i mean have they talked to you about any possible role or just about getting back to 100 percent? and then when your name is called then okay we're going to call you up uh, I think it's more of that. I um, haven't had too many conversations. It's kind of it was just kind of like, hey, whenever you feel good, that's when we're gonna get you out there. Just kind of get you built up, get you ready. Um, whatever role they want me in, whether it's bullpen, spot starter, start every five six days, whatever it is, um, I'm ready to take on that role and take on that challenge and do whatever I can to help whatever team I'm playing on um, win some ball games. Um, postseason play is it's exciting and it's fun to watch and would love to be a part of it. Yeah, because of course the Dodgers. They expand their roster on September 1st. You have 14 pitchers with the lead they have in the division. Of course, opportunity for you to come up. I think you get that opportunity. They're going to go and run with it. But what are your expectations as far as the remainder of the season? Is it just that going out there wherever you are, giving your best every single day and really just trying to get back to the guy you were and continue to develop? That's it. 100%. That's it. Just take the ball. Um, take the ball every five days. I mean, you miss five, miss three months and it, you're itching to get back the whole time. It's like, all right, like it's tomorrow the day that I'm going to feel good. It's tomorrow the day I'm going to feel good. And finally it does. And then it's like, all right, now I got to be careful about coming back and not trying to like rush it and push it too soon and make sure I get all my bullpens in so that I'm feeling good and I have everything where I, I'm ready uh, to go back into games. And then once you get back into games, it's now it's just like, okay, let's fine tune things. Let's, get ahead of guys, let's pitch, let's make pitches, use different situations, and then um, just go out there and compete and have fun. Yeah, we know that you're developed as a starter. You're built up as a starter. But what are your thoughts on the possibility of saying, hey, Ryan, we want you in the bullpen because we know that you're one of the best arms in our organization. Would you be open to that? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'd be open to it. I'm open to whatever role. Um, whatever I can do to help the team, that's – that's what that's what I'll do. Whenever my name is called, whatever role I'm, I'm for it. Um, I pitched in the bullpen before. Um, I pitched out of the bullpen uh, summer ball in the Cape League, so I've had the experience doing it. And I'm, then the Dodgers do a great job in the player development side of having like an opener, so that you kind of get the feel of uh, coming out of the bullpen. So I've done it plenty of times, and um, if that's the role that I'm given, I'm going to take it and run with it. That's really interesting to me, the fact that they prep you in advance for basically any possibility. But I kind of want to circle back a little bit to your last start. Like I said, you're in this zone. You had a perfecto brewing. You had the perfectio, as we like to call it here, possibly. What is your mindset right there? Are you thinking about it? Do you know your numbers? I just kind of want to go through the pitcher's mind in that moment. Because me, I can barely watch when we get to the later innings in games like that. But you, do you know your numbers at the time? And kind of what's going through your head? Um. The things that really went through my head were like the when I got through five innings. So I hadn't gone through four, gone past four innings. Um, the ones before, I mean, 
I pitched pretty decent on the ones before, um, like okay, but I just had a lot of long at bats that just made innings super long, and it was just like foul ball, foul tip. I'm like, all right, I'm trying to get you to get out early. Stop fouling it off. Put it in play. Hit it and get out. Get yourself out. Um, but for that one, once I got through the fifth inning, I was like, all right, I got through five today. I don't know what my pitch count is. I'm sure it's around 90 ish. Um, Cause I don't really want to know. Cause I don't want that in the back of my mind, seeing that number pitch count kind of creep up and that's back there. But once I got through the fifth, I was like, mm, are they going to let me go out for the sixth? Yeah. And like I, at that point I was like, I kind of know what's going on a little bit, but then they let me go out through the sixth. Then I was like, okay, there's no chance they're going to let me go out for the seventh. So I kind of like started giving Trav and Doug, the pitching coach, like a little bit of a side eye. See, they were having conversations. They're like, are we going to let them go or not? And I was like, okay, are they coming for me? Am I getting the handshake right now? What's going on? Then they let me go out for the seventh. And then I gave up the single. And I uh, said a few choice words uh, when that happened. And uh, I was like, they're for sure coming back, coming out for me. Like I was staring out in like center field, like just expecting to turn around and see Trav right on the mound. He wasn't there. Let me kind of go out there and battle through it. And then uh, I think I hit the 90 pitch count and that was it for me. Um, but it was, it was a great day. Um, a lot of fun, great defense behind me. Um, Pat Mazika called a great game with me. We had a good game plan going into it. And then uh, it was just nice to be able to go out there and get through seven ups and just kind of get the pitch count built up and get that feel of like starting a game and going deep into a ball game again. Yeah, that's what I loved about it. Because after you get the hit, you just go out there and you strike out the next two batters, right? I mean, you want to finish that game off strong. Have you ever pitched a perfect game or no hitter at any level? I know back in 2017 at Bull, you flirted with some, but have you ever done that? Uh, I think the closest thing I had was 21 in Tulsa. I think I went seven perfecto. And then I went out for the eighth, and I think I had like a 12-pitch walk or something like that to start, and then I got yanked. Uh, I think that was probably the closest. I think I've gone I gone out for the ninth once in college maybe, and I think I hit the guy. I was pretty gassed if I remember <laughs> right. Um, but uh, no, that would probably be the closest. Um, would say 21-7. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, Hey, look, we love the fact that you're back down the mound. I think you're heading in the right direction. I think it's only a matter of time before you get that opportunity. Once again, I think you're checking off all the boxes in your rehab and it's great to see you win that award, win that player of the week and really just get back and then let the people know, Hey, don't sleep on Ryan Pepe, right? I mean, you're still one of the dudes in this organization. I think is going to be a part of the core moving forward. But of course, Ryan, you know, I can't just let you out of here without some rapid fire. Okay. Yeah, I know bro, that's bring it on. Have to do here. Yep. We do a little rapid fire segment. I'm calling it pep talk and it's going to be quick, but let's get right in. You ready, Ryan? I'm ready. Bring it on. All right. First question. Who is your favorite sports team in any sport that you're a fan of, Ryan? Colts. Indianapolis Colts. Colts fan. All right. You got your boy Richardson starting. Man, excited about that. I am very excited about that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Also, you played football too, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, you're a football class 5A All-State quarterback. 29 touchdowns, 4,572 yards for Westfield High School. The Shamrocks, right? Yep, go Rocks. Hey, you know I do my prep when I interview Pepio. Second one, favorite uniform in Major League Baseball other than the Dodgers? Oh, there's a couple of good ones. Uh, big fan of baby blues, so I would probably say the Rangers baby blues or the Cardinals baby blues. Yeah, the baby blues are fire. Love those. Okay, favorite road team to pitch at? Uh, I have to say Pittsburgh debut spot, um, uh, gorgeous ballpark. Um, you get, I mean, that's tough to beat the debut. Still remember that backstage Dodgers. Okay. What was your first car? First car, 1998 green Lexus GS 400. Starting with a Lexus. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yep. Thanks hey. dad. Uh, my dad gave me that one. Passed it down. Respect. I had a Mazda, my Mazda three. I called it my, my Mazda Roddy, but <laughs> okay. Best meal that you can cook, Ryan. Uh, I can make a pretty good steak. Cook a nice steak. Okay. If you could go, if we're going to Westfield, Indiana, where are we eating? Where are you taking me? Where's the best spot to eat? I'm taking you to Big Hoffa's barbecue spot. Big Hoffa's, man. I heard the garlic bread, the ribs, the brisket. It's fire, man. Four and a half stars on Yelp. I mean, that place is killing it. What is your go to karaoke song? Oh, gosh. I am musically challenged. I am a brutal singer. Anything music wise, art, anything art wise, I'm awful. But I'll sing, I'll go like some Luke Combs because you can kind of like fake it till you make it a little bit with that. So I'll, I'll do some of that. I did, uh, we took a trip to the Dominican uh, Republic to like kind of get that 
experience to where some of your teammates are from uh, the year I got drafted. And we did karaoke out in the street there one night, and I sang uh, uh, Luke Combs song there. So that's that would be my go-to. We can do some Luke Combs. I saw I did that show in Indiana in the rain. We can do some Luke Combs. I'll do my my beer never broke my heart. That's my jam. That's what I sang. Long neck, yep. ice cold beer never broke my heart. That's my jam. That is my yep. Luke Combs. I think it's underrated. Hurricanes Club. I'm going with that one. Okay, next one. What is on your baseball bucket list? Uh, playing all 30 stadiums. Love it. Do you have any superstitions? Um, not nothing too crazy i mean wear stirrups when i pitch um and they're back too i was a little upset when they were gone for a little bit there i don't wear them in spring training so i, I yeah it's just, it's just during the season just, just during the, the okay season. okay that's fair okay who's on your pitchers mount rushmore list who um dang, that's a good one uh randy johnson uh pedro martinez um let's see I got to pick two more. That's uh, super tough. Kirsch. Um, trying to earn some brownie points with that one. Yeah, I was like, he watches this show, so he'll see that. He'll respect that. And then let's see, four. Number four. Uh, I was a big fan of Trevor Hoffman growing up because of his changeup. So I'll put Trevor Hoffman up there. I like got the change of artists in there. I respect that. Okay. Last one. Which of your teammates would you put as your emergency contact, Ryan? Uh, let's see. Whenever I call somebody, I probably put Tony because whenever I call Tony, he answers every time. Tony, also let's throw him in there. You went on a road trip. You could pick two of your teammates. Is Tony one of those guys? Yeah, I'd pick Tony. But he can't bring his cats because I'm allergic. Can't can't have the cats. No, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. I no know. Cats. I know. How about your second teammate you put on that ride? Uh, I bring Will. Will, Tony, and who's controlling the ox? Who's controlling the music? Uh, I let Will take it. But we'll take, okay, you guys stop at a gas station. What snack are you going for? Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. All right, well, that is going to do it, Ryan. You passed the pep talk. Thank you so much for the time. We're so happy to see you back out there on the mound having success once again. We can't wait to see you in the show once again. We'll catch up soon. Have a great rest of your season, and take it easy, Ryan. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it.